Mountain heading 185, reduce speed 182 knots. 185 on the heading 180 on the speed go fair 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 knots to 40 mean. Well, the guys, Matt here, long time no speak. And uh, I was about to say welcome back to another P3D video, but actually, we are not in Flight Simulator at the moment. So, something occurred to me the other day. I was sat in my office looking at my YouTube channel and the comments, and I noticed a common theme, and that was a lot of people asking about Project Fly. Now, Project Fly, if you don't know, is my kind of internet baby. I made it years and years ago with a bunch of people. I actually started out making it on my own, and then from there, I uh, got a little bit of hype up through Twitch, and before we knew it, we had a full-blown team. As time progressed, people left, new people joined, and then before I knew it, it had kind of snowballed to the point where we are uh, basically 50,000 active users strong and growing. It is probably one of the best shower ideas I ever had. The funny thing is, everybody asks, what is Project Fly? And you know the amount of people that just turn around and say, I don't know, but I use it every single time I fly and I can't fly without it is just insane. And I kind of have the same issue. Like if I was to describe Project Fly to you, I'd say, well, it's a fancy logbook, but it's it's more than that. It, it gives me a purpose to fly. I have the ability to track my fleet. I have the ability to communicate with people. I have the ability to flight plan, dispatch, and I also have the ability to watch people in real time on the radar, which is essentially like having a flight radar 2.4 for the virtual simulation world. So in this video, I figured I would actually sit down and go through all of the current features that are available within Project Fly. Now, the reason why I'm doing it now is because we're actually currently in the process of developing version 4. What you're about to see is going to be version 3, but version 4 is uh, maybe a month or two away from being into public release. And version 4 is uh, basically, it's got all the same features as, as version 3. Uh, it looks way better, and then it has some extra features on top of it, which I will kind of show you as time progresses. If people enjoy this type of sort of sit-down tutorial video, and you want to see more as Project Fly progresses, then every time we roll out an update, I will sit down and I'll talk you through the new update, and then you can see what you get from it. If not, then I'll just make this, and then when version 4 releases, I'll do a comparison video, and if you still like it, great. I hope you would, because the idea of an update is to get better. Uh, anyway, so I'll leave the link to Project Fly the, uh, in the video description. Uh, the URL at the moment is, uh, well, you go to projectfly.co.uk or app.projectfly.co.uk, you'll get to the same place. If you go in via the non-subdomain route, so just via projectfly.co.uk, you may see the old UI, which is like a white UI. Uh, but once you log in or make an account, you will get taken to this new UI. So this is the landing page of version 3. And I actually made this and didn't finish it. And you can tell I didn't finish it because if you scroll right to the bottom, there is a massive footer. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. I think I just lost the design for it or something. But uh, I mean, I still believe that the landing page is actually very, very nice. I think it does serve its purpose. I mean, if you look at the key features of Project Fly, industry leading radar, absolutely. It has a passport system, absolutely. People crave the 100% passport stamps. And uh, only a few people have done it. Uh, an in-depth logbook. Well, you'll see. It definitely does have an in-depth in logbook, even. Uh, the most realistic dispatcher, kind of a lie, because uh, when we were building version 3, I actually thought the dispatcher would be ready by this point, so I stuck that in here. Uh, actually, the dispatcher's coming in version 4, and it will be the most realistic, but it's not in version 3. The best community? Well, of course. I mean, uh, I everybody is biased towards their own community. Uh, but here's the thing. Communities in general 
are good. They always support the person behind the content, and in my case, it's no different. However, I don't know many communities that essentially saved the life of the content creator. Now, you may think, what the hell are you talking about, Matt? But here's the thing. I used to uh, weigh 550 pounds. And as a result of seeing the light of life, as a result of meeting all sorts of weird and wonderful people from all over the planet and, and figuring out that there is more to life than just sitting in an office all day, eating myself to death, I decided to get help and I fixed it. And you know, 320 pound weight loss in a year. And it's all because of this. I mean, it takes quite a lot for me to admit that the only thing in life that made me want to do better and fix my health was the internet. And it was, uh, you know, it was the best, the best decision even I ever made. And it's all because of you. So, yeah, the best community. Absolutely. I mean, okay, I did it for me, but I also, uh, the big, a big part of it was, was for everybody that was supporting me and, and pushing me through it. Uh, real up-to-date schedules. Absolutely. Every 30 days, we pull the global schedules from the web and we give them to you. I will show you that when we get inside the application. Um, a few numbers of statistics. Well, this has gone right up. So when this was written, this was 25,000 flights per month. That is now on. Damn, I actually can't remember. You know what? I'm going to go on my other computer right now, and I'm going to go on to the Project Fly Facebook page, and I'm going to see what the last statistics were, because we just published some statistics in January. So January 2019, we are seeing 253,000 flying hours versus 80,000 two years ago. We are seeing... 80,000 flights per month as opposed to 25,000. The average concurrent flights at the moment is approximately 700. So we're doing way better than we were. And of course, that is all thanks to you. And the lasting 20K active members, that's now up to 50,000. Global itinerary. Well, you'll see. And of course, the last thing, the live stream integration. So it is all there. To all intents and purposes, it's a fancy logbook and it's all there. So if you want to make an account, you can do so by clicking make an account and you'll go to this page. I already have an account, surprisingly. So I am just going to click already have an account and I'm going to log in using the Meta Simulations test account like so. Now, when you're in, you'll see that you, uh, well, first of all, I'm on the web here. So this is the web application. What you actually need to do really is download the desktop application. And to do that, if you actually go back to the home page, so app.projectfly.co.uk, you might have to log out, press download now. And then once you've downloaded it, run it. I'm going to come away from the web now. And if you look in all programs and then scroll down, you will find Meta Simulations Limited and then there's Project Fly. Run that as administrator. And I'll be logged in as me, which is fine. But what I will do is I will log out just so I can show you everything in the uh, from like a new user instead of uh, seeing all of my stuff. So to log in, we will log in as Meta Simulations and the password is there, login. Right, so when you logged in, you'll see at the bottom a massive orange or whatever color that is, yellowy bar that says, first you need to add an aircraft, then book a flight, and then fly now. It's really that simple. But let's look around. Let's look around at everything. So, left-hand side, you've got your navigation. You have Stratus. Stratus is like the dashboard. In the version 4 of Project Fly, it's actually just called Dashboard because everyone was thinking that I'd misspelled status. I don't know why. You've then got bookings in the subnav, and then fleet, uh, and then next is logbook, contracts, schedules. Next up is the radar. There's no su subnav to that, but the, you don't need it. After that is community, and then support, and then right down at the bottom is settings. That is all you really need as far as navigation. Over on the right here, you've got notifications. Uh, this is from people trying to add this account as a friend, 
Uh, I don't know why, because it's like the just a random test account. And then, of course, if you uh, hover over your avatar here, you can view your profile. At the top, you've got the Zulu time and then sandbox mode. We are planning on implementing a career mode into Project Fly. However, it's not ready yet, so that will stay as sandbox mode for now. But in version 4, that button is completely gone because the way we're integrating career mode doesn't require a toggle. There's plenty of fly now buttons on the page. You've got one here, you've got one here, you've got one... Uh, that's it, there's two. Okay, so there's only two fly now buttons, but that's still enough. You've got a nice map, which would populate if you'd have done any flights. You've got your passport here, and then you've got no tams, you've got FS Elite news articles, and then you've got people that are flying right now. So, I think we should first of all hit the settings. Here is the settings. Now, whether you're on version 3 or version 4, it won't make a difference because they're all the same. The settings, you can do things like edit your avatar, edit your cover photo, simple stuff like that. Or you can leave it as default, and if you do, you end up with my cheesy cover photo, which says no cover photo. That is just plain wrong. Full name's there, display name's there, username is there. You cannot change your username. However, we only ever show people your display name. Your full name is used for dispatching purposes only. Display message for your bio, and then a profile bio, a location, and an airport. If you had your account, this is all the GDPR stuff. It's a bunch of balls. But if you are that way inclined that you want to remove your account, download your data, or just be a pain, then this is where to do it. Applications. If you are a developer and you don't mind working with APIs, then you might just want to visit this page. However, it's not done yet. So when it is, feel free to use it. Connections tab is pretty self-explanatory. Put your VATSIM ID in, IVAO ID in, Pilot Edge ID in, FS Cloud username in. And you can also connect your Discord account if you use Discord, which means that when you're flying, you will have what they call a rich presence, which means that when I click on your username in Discord, it will show me where you are flying. Pretty cool. You can also connect with Facebook, Spotify, Twitter, and Twitch. These are all for overlay related things. And that is basically the connections tab. Next is the most pointless tab, which is condensed to the newer version. This is the forum tab, and this just allows you to grab a signature of your total flights and total hours along with your username. Membership and payments, this is for the subscription stuff. If you think that our service is worth uh, $4.99 a month, then there is a gold option. If you think it's worth $2.99 or $2.49, I can't remember which one, then silver. If you're happy with the free, you're more than welcome to use the free. We're going to be adding another tier in the next version, which is going to be Platinum, and that is for dis the, uh, the new Dispatcher. Although, every account will get full access to everything until a certain point. It has to be limited at some point, otherwise we would end up in tremendous debt. Password and security. Who cares about that? Well, I do, but I'm not going to show it you because this is a dud account, so it doesn't really matter. And then your privacy stuff. So if you don't want people to see you on the radar, this is where you need to hide yourself. Uh, and if you don't want people looking at your logbook and stuff like that, then this is also where you can do that. App settings. This is pretty important. Make sure all your folders are correct. This is what we support at the moment to export. So you can see there is a long list of planes. At the top here, you can select your OFP format. So if you like to fly, for example, EasyJet, you can select EasyJet. If you uh, are in the land of freedom, then you would select pounds and flight maps, up to you, reserve fuel, up to you. All of this is up to you. However, in the new version, our dispatcher changes all of these because it's a proper dispatcher. And I can't wait to show it off. Next up is general, and this is just random stuff to do with the app. So confirmation up on application close is pretty useful. The amount of times that I've just hit the X and then, uh, yeah, it's gone. But uh, you can have it to uh, only ask if a flight is in progress, which is pretty useful. Uh, system tray is just when you minimize it. Is there an icon? Yes, there is. And the close button should uh, either minimize or exit, depending on what you like. 
Notifications and emails, well, this is relatively straightforward again. If you want marketing emails that we don't really send, honestly, like in the last year, I think we've sent three emails. Two of them are about group flights, and then the other one was just thanking people for a good year. We don't spam you. We never will. We just want you to enjoy the services. Schedules, well, schedules right now are uh, free for everybody. That's completely unlocked while we're in open beta. Um, but the idea is that if you were, for example, a blue user, you can have up to five schedules in the system at any one time. So you can browse the global schedules of five airlines at any one time. And all you would do is, for example, if I want British Airways, search BAW, and that would eventually return British Airways. I hit that and then press add, and then it goes in there. And then I can't remove it until the 4th of April. I can then recycle it and replace it with another airline at that time of expiry. Next up, simulator settings. Well, it should detect everything automatically, which it hasn't done for me, interestingly. It has for X-Plane, but it hasn't for P3D version 4. But never mind, you can put it in manually. Uh, the connection type for you is your choice. You have SIM Connect, which is native. Now, if you're trying to use SIM Connect, you need to install SIM Connect. And the way to install SIM Connect is very simple. If you go to your P3D core folder, so the root of your install of P3D, head to the Redist folder, then Interface, and then you want to install the SimConnect uh, MSI, I think it is. If you click ESPv1, then there's an MSI, install that, come back out, go into the RTM, Retail, Lib, and install this one, come back out, and do the same for all of them. You don't have to do the Japan one or the Russian one unless you are using... Uh, actually, no, you'll never need to use them. Um, so you, uh, install the ESPv1, RTM, SP1, and XPAC2. And then, by magic, when you select SIM Connect and you boot the, the SIM up, then you will see that it actually connects. There's a lot of people that say to us, all right, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Well, it's because you've not installed SIM Connect. By default... Lockheed Martin does not install SIM Connect for you. That is up to you to do. Underneath X-Plane plugin, well, if you use X-Plane, like a lot of us do, just whack the plugin. It will install uh, the plugin for you, and then you just run X-Plane. And uh, yeah, easy. Last but not least, streamer settings. If you use the overlay, then you can uh, put the overlay into Twitch. And you can see all of your stuff like course. I mean, you can see it here. I'm not going to read it all out. But this is what you can enable on your screen. And uh, again, in the new version, the overlay is getting a pretty nice revamp, a lot more customization and, uh, and stuff like that. So that is the settings out of the way. Of course, if you wanted to check the version number at the bottom, and then there's a log out button if you need it. Next up, quickly go through support. Now, it's very blank because there's nothing happening, but if you need help, head over to support. And if you need to submit a ticket, press view tickets. And then at the top here, press this button, and then you can submit a ticket. One of the staff will get back to you. We actually employ people to monitor this basically 24-7. And from the feedback I've had so far, the support experience with Project Fly has been pretty exceptional. So... Good job, guys, if you're watching this. There is a knowledge base. Well, there is, but there's nothing in it. There is in the new version. We made it, and then we didn't fill it out. My bad. It is worth noting, if you do use the support system and you get a reply, then it will come into the notification pop-up here. You might get a, a Windows notification, too. You'll also get an email if you've opted into it. Next up, community. Well, it's a forum, and it's also getting rewritten for version 4. If you like to discuss things in great detail, it's pretty active, to be fair. Um, more, more so than I actually thought it would be, so we are really putting some effort into uh, kind of bringing the community together. Because, um, well, let's just say, big things be happening. Okay, next up, the creme de la creme of Project Fly. This is the Project Fly radar. And right now, I have toggled on only the people flying on Project Fly. There is currently 468. Considering there's 629 on BATSIM and 818 on IVAO, and they've been going for 10 plus years, and we've been going for two and a bit, I am exceptionally happy with how things are going at the moment. We've added a weather radar, or should I call it a rainfall radar, so you can see who's getting battered the most with weather. 
And if you would like to see the status of uh, said flights, click on them. And then on the left hand side, there's all your details. So Lufthansa 401, user Fly Blue. Hello there, if you're watching. If you're not, then oh well. He is from JFK to Frankfurt, 747 8. He's got two hours, 43 minutes left. And uh, he's on that sim. And he's happily cruising along at uh, 35,000 feet. Just above him is uh, 777 heading off to JFK. Now, if you're uh, familiar with the way British Airways are operating at the moment, they have some of the old school uh, BOAC jumbos uh, roaming around. And I bet you will find one because I've seen a load of them over the past couple of days. So if we just start clicking on long haul planes, I am confident. There's one. Found it. There it is. The BOAC livery to celebrate the 100 years but with British Airways. And uh, John Tavendale, Textures by Tavers, has done a great repaint of it. And people are using it like it's going out of fashion. It's fantastic. Uh, they just uh, did an A319 one today, actually. And uh, in BEA. And uh, that's uh, actually doing a Manchester run and back at the moment. So... Uh, I, uh, I look forward to flying that. So yeah, you can see 470 people on the radar. People are using Project Fly and it is fantastic. So if you are one of those people, thank you so much for uh, for using it. Like uh, I wake up every day and the first thing I do on my computer is log on to Project Fly and I look at the radar and I just sit here and smile because it's fantastic. If you want to know what it's like to toggle on all the network traffic, well, we'll do that now. Imagine if all three were merged into one. That, ladies and gents, is what I want in life. If I can get Project Fly to this level of traffic with a network, like I would actually build a network, invest money into the infrastructure of a network so we could have ATC all over the place. Like this is the future. And just mark my words, this is the future. Okay, let's turn them off because I cherish my CPU. Okay, let's head over to Stratus. So, um, this is a new account, so I don't actually have any flights in the system or anything like that. I will log out of this and go into my account uh, in just a second so you can see what like a flourished account looks like. But uh, for this, it's uh, quite simple. Uh, there are different subnavs here. The ones, uh, actually, you know what? Let, let's go from the bottom upwards because it's kind of pointless going from the top down because we have to add stuff. So at the bottom, you've got schedules. Now, there's two things you can do here. And, and for some reason, not many people know about this, but I guess it's just because we don't really, we, honestly, I don't think I've ever marketed Project Fly. People, it's just word of mouth. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the first video I've done on it in about three years or maybe even four years. Um, so yeah. Uh, stuff like this people seem to be shocked by but it is in here so first of all we will explore the schedules hit the button and you will be given a bunch of drop downs so for example uh, last Tuesday I went to Amsterdam with uh, EasyJet from Liverpool so I went uh, actually the aircraft types not so much let's just type in EasyJet and then we will uh, wait for that to, to load and this now will return all of the EasyJet schedules all over the place. You can actually see that they've got the Neos on uh, the Luton Edinburgh flights. That's pretty nice. Uh, but I want to go out of Liverpool because I went from Liverpool to Amsterdam and I want to type Eham and it was in the morning, the very first one. So it was uh, 7001. Here we go. So this is 7001. It operates on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And uh, this one operates on a Saturday. And then there'll be one that operates on a Sunday as well. Uh, you'll figure it out. So uh, you can search any fleet, sorry, not fleet, what am I talking about? Any schedule of any airline globally with no restriction at the moment. Now, when version 4 comes into play, what is going to happen is you're going to be able to do on a free account five airlines. So pick your best five throughout the month, and then every 30 days they'll reset. You can choose another five. The higher your account tier, the more airlines you'll be able to, to go and search. And if you have the Platinum account, then you'll get everything. So that's the schedules. Next up, the itinerary builder. Now, this is something that I still to this day absolutely love. Have you ever been stuck 
and you don't know where to fly. Well, this thing kind of helps. If you have an aircraft in mind, it helps even more, but less of that. If I want to fly, let's say EasyJet again, because why not? Everyone loves a bit of orange. If I type in EasyJet and then I type in A320. Now, the A320s come up and there is a million orange dots on the screen. Now, these orange dots represent a airport of which an EasyJet A320 is departing out of within the next 20 minutes to an hour. So, let's see. I think to myself, right, I want to go out of Luton. So here's Luton here. So we're going to make this more obvious in version 4. I just know that this is Luton. If you hover over it, it shows you. So if I click Luton, you will then get this spider. And it goes all the way around wherever these A320s are flying to. So you can see we've got one to Belfast. There's one to Edinburgh, then up to Aberdeen. Uh, and then I guess this is Porto, yeah, and then Madrid, you've got um, Alicante, Barcelona, Toulouse, Bordeaux, Geneva, Paris, Vienna, right? Okay, you get the point. So I have decided that I don't really want to fly for that long, so I'm just going to do a quick Edinburgh flight. So I click Edinburgh. And now it comes up and it says, call sign Easy 13 Tango Echo, flight number is U217, departs at 1800 Zulu, arrives 1915. And there's a registration. It was one of those Oscar Echo registrations or the EasyJet Europe or something like that. So I can add it to the list. And now it then tries to calculate where I could go when I landed with an EasyJet turnaround time. So about 25, 30 minutes. So we could go back to Luton. There's, there's one going back. We could go to Gatwick or we could go to Belfast. Now, naturally, they would probably go back to Luton. But for the sake of it, I'm going to kick Gatwick. And here's the Gatwick one. So, Easy 75 Uniform Papa, U2812, 1950, 2120. Different aircraft type, but, like, whatever. So, you can add that. And then once you add that, it says the airport has no further schedule. So, that's it. You're done now. That's as far as you can go today. Now, if you ignore the times and then you did this again, then you could go anywhere. But what you could technically do is you could find an airline schedules and you could just plot yourself an entire day's worth of flying based around the schedules. And then once you're done, you just hit book flights and then you can book the flights using the, uh, the drop down menu. Now you'll see the flight type, easy, schedule, flight rules, IFR, easy, network, whatever you use, doesn't matter. I use VATSIM. Now select aircraft. I don't have any aircraft, so... I could use this little modal here to, uh, to add some, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take us over to the fleet page, which is next, and I'll show you how to add an aircraft. Now, in the fleet page here, you can import an aircraft. Sadly, because I haven't got my P3D folder set up properly, it won't do that, but if you had, it, if you had them set up properly in the settings, it would show you. Uh, but to add a new aircraft, relatively straightforward. Press add new aircraft and a modal pops up. So let's say I want to do, I don't know, uh, 787 Virgin. So let's type in 787. It's a dash 9. And I want Virgin, so V-I-R. And then registration. I have no idea. So let's just go uh, V-I-R-Z. It doesn't really matter. Home base, Heathrow. Ugh. And then let's get a picture. So I'll go to my pictures on my computer. That folder is mine and no one else's. And okay, cool. I've got some uh, 787 shots here. Uh, do I have any more? Let's see if there's any more. They're not virgin. They're not virgin. They're not virgin. No. No, no, no. no. Okay, I'll use the top ones. So let's just grab this one. And then we'll add aircraft. And then you'll see that saves it to the system. And then you have now uh, your aircraft set. So you can now do some things with this aircraft. You can edit it. You can book a flight back to the base, but it's a bit pointless because it's already at the base. You can contract it to a base, or you can share it with friends, or you can delete it. Now, this is going to be a bit more streamlined in version 4, but essentially, 
you will be uh, you will have a bunch of controls to be able to manipulate the plane to wherever you want it to go because this is a sandbox environment and in a sandbox environment you can do what you want but it now allows us to use this aircraft to book so we'll go to the bookings bookings on the left create new booking let's go from Heathrow now I went with uh, Virgin Atlantic from Heathrow to LAX and we went on the 789 and it's here we did VS7 11 hours 15 minutes see how it's returned all the schedules for Heathrow to LAX there's so many Air New Zealand United American BA Virgin uh, I don't know what that is and oh Air New Zealand it must just be a different logo okay so we'll click the top one VS7 Virgin 7 Bravo 935 2050 Heathrow LAX Schedule, IFR, now you'll see our aircraft here, Virgin, Vatsim, Book and Dispatch. How would you like to dispatch? Now, you can do a bunch of things. If you use PFPX or whatever, you can just paste the route in, or you can import the, pan uh, the uh, flight plan file, which is uh, what PFPX would export for you. You can use Simbrief, which is most people's way out at the moment. So we'll use Simbrief to be easy. And of course, I have to log in because apparently it doesn't remember any credentials. This is not us, by the way. This is Simbrief. So let me log in really quick. Log in. And then it will process a flight plan for you. And there we go. 100%. It will now open a browser with the PDF in. And then we can get on with flying the flight. Actually, no, it doesn't open a browser. It so it takes you to your bookings. So now you've got fly now, briefing, export, pre-file. So briefing will open a PDF with the briefing. So let's see. This is just a standard sim brief flight plan. Um, if you don't know how to read flight plans, let me know. And I may make a video on how to read them. I think uh, my videos for the best part of, of the next few weeks might be just a little bit more tutorially. Uh, because uh, uh, sometimes just flying all the time can get a little bit boring and burnt out. And I almost want to help people get better at flying in the sim. I think that's my, my goal for this year. So, um, yeah, if you would like any, any tutorials on any specific things, flight planning, fuel planning, whatever, then just let me know. And if I don't know it myself, I will endeavor to go and learn it and then come back and, uh, and impart that wisdom. So there's your flight plan done. Next, you can export it if you want. So if you're flying, I don't know, the PMDG or the quality wings, you can export it to whichever folder you like. Um, then you can pre-file it on VATSIM. So here it is. Uh, it's trying to pre-file as Meta simulations, which is not a good idea, but you get all of the routing, you get all the remarks, which is what people like. Um, and from that, you can press fly now. Now, I don't have an active simulator connection, but if I did, you would see a window which showed you the progress and some uh, weather radar, sorry, not weather radar, um, some uh, weather-related stuff like the Meta. you got a scratch pad over here. You know, you could just type a bunch of crap in it, and then it's always going to be there. Um, and then if, you're, uh, if you've got problems, you can divert the flight. Um, you can also cancel it, complete it when it's done. And uh, then it will head in and you'll uh, you'll have a completed flight in your logbook, but we've not flown one. I'll show you my logbook uh, in just a second. So that's bookings done. That's fleet done. Uh, that's the logbook I'll show you on my account. And then really the last thing to show you is a contract system, which is our kind of test bed to see how many people enjoy the economy of flight sim. And it turns out a bloody lot of you um, this is the most used feature of Project Fly. It is absolutely rammed. I think it's something stupid like one contract is posted every like 35 seconds. So, um, I've never put a contract up on this account. But if you want to put a contract up, let's say you fly. The, the way I use a contract system and everybody else is different. Um, or not everybody else, but most people do it their own way. Um, so if I, let's say I fly the, the Virgin plane that I just tried to book, then I fly it from Heathrow to LAX. So it's a 12-hour flight, like, you know, it's a 14-hour day once you take all the planning into consideration. I don't have the mental strength to bring that back. So I will go here, and I'll set up a contract, and I'll say, right, I want you to bring my 787 back from LAX. 
and I'll give them all the data that they need. You're going to have to do a bit of searching for them. And you can set a deadline. And then you can put a briefing in and some payload and stuff like that. And then that will go into the available contracts. So if we look at some contracts that are already uh, being requested, here, here's one, Silkway West. Uh, he actually has a username of the airline that he's flying. That's pretty cool. Dedicated. So here is one. Um, he wants to go from, uh, I don't know where this place is, Gulf Yankee Delta uh, to Amsterdam. And um, he's awaiting a pilot. No one's actually took this off him yet. Uh, his briefing is cost index is 60, nose cargo door not needed. Upper deck max temp is 10 Celsius. That is very specific. I like people like this. And why is that? Why is the upper, decks, uh, the upper deck max temp 10 Celsius? Well, cargo is oil, food, and minerals. The oil goes in the upper deck. So this guy is actually like role playing this. And this is why this was created to just see what people are like. So, you know, we can't physically put oil in the upstairs of a 747, but we can pretend it's there. You can change the temperature in the cabin. You can ch change the temperature in the uh, in the cargo holds and stuff like that. It is possible. So whatever this oil is must be some like serious oil because it can't spoil it, you know, any higher than 10 degrees, which is very, very cold. So if I wanted that, I could place a bid. And then if he wanted to accept it, he would. And then I'd fly it for him. And then it takes his aircraft back to where he wants it to be. Um, so th that that's a, that's the contract system. It's fantastic. It's so basic, but it's so good as well. And I think over the over the coming months, once we've done the dispatcher and stuff like that, we're going to start to add little um, sort of economy based systems into Project Fly to essentially just kind of give you a little bit more of a purpose and to to keep you flying and 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 all of that stuff. I'm trying to get some tour based systems done, some group flight based systems done. Um, and then start to mess around with like financials. So with our new dispatcher, we have um, a thing that allows us to calculate the en route cost of a flight. I'm not just talking about like landing fees and handling fees and stuff like that. I'm talking about en route sector fees, like air traffic control fees and crossing fees and stuff like that. Um, I really do think that in a year or maybe a little bit more than a year, uh, this will have a full on economy to a scale of just insanity. And that mixed with the other stuff that we've got coming out, I, I'm so excited. Like getting up every morning is is just such a privilege when I get to do this. So um so yeah if you're if you're part of this, seriously thank you for, for letting us do it. Um and thank you for supporting what is uh what is just the best job in the world. Before I sign off on this very lengthy video I told you I'd log into my account because everyone on uh, on stream always gets to see it. And um, then the people on YouTube are like, oh, I can't see yours. You get these I mean, you could just watch my VOD, whatever. Uh, but yeah, my username is Matt. You can have me as a friend. And um, ah, look at this. Virgin 7 Bravo detected. Would you like to resume? No, I would not. That's insane. Cancel. Yes. Oh no, I've broken it. It's just because I it's because I didn't lock uh, shut the thing down before. But anyway, this is what a full logbook looks like. So I've got one thousand nine hundred and fifteen hours. Uh, the last flight I did was from Budapest to Vienna. It was a very good flight actually. It was in the TBM nine uh, nine hundred by uh, Hot Start. Very good aircraft. Completely recommend it. And uh, I got shouted that by the controller because he was being uh, let's just say very very stupid. Um, there's a problem with the handling of the TBM sometimes, and I was testing it on the apron in the middle of nowhere, minding my own business, and he starts spamming me on PM, telling me that you know I shouldn't be spinning around in circles, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Right. Anyway, so there is the logbook. Uh, you can search. You know, I'll see if I ever did Virgin. There you go. No Virgins. Let's try VIR. My chair. Okay, I did a lot, a lot of Virgins. <laughs> I wish. Never. Huh, what's my life? Anyway. That's that. Okay, so I can't show you the rest of it because there's some administrative stuff and I'm scared of clicking the wrong things. So that's Project Fly in a nutshell. We are always open to suggestions.
There's a lot going on, but if you have any suggestions, please let us know. You are all more than welcome to join Project Fly. It is completely free to use. There are subscription options available if you feel like it is a worthy cause. But do not feel obliged. We will look... Well, I was going to say we will. I would love to have you regardless. My accountant would probably disagree, but it's fine. So, I do apologize for the, uh, the bit of a gap between the last video and this one. Um, I had some weird stuff happen in my life uh, before Christmas. Stuff that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Um, I'm not going to go into it on here because it's not worth bringing negativity into my life right now. And it's pretty positive. So we'll just leave it at that. Uh, but I do want to get back into making videos on the regular. Uh, I'm going to try and do a lot of flying in X-Plane and uh, a little bit more in P3D. I think I'm going to get the VR kit out as well. Uh, I'm going to fit a house move into that as well at some point, so that's going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, any suggestions, anything that you need, um, in the comments, as always, I will keep an eye out on them. Uh, Project Fly, it's it's the future, and that's all i got to say. Okay, until the next time, take care, guys. Tara for now.